At FedEx, we're making carbon capture research our priority because Earth is our priority. Our goal is to be carbon neutral by 2040. We call it Priority Earth. FedEx, where now meets next. We all want to be heard. And when you're not, it's frustrating. Even if it's something as silly as the sandwich shop for getting your extra avocado you ordered. When no one listens to you, it's frustrating. That's why it's so refreshing that AT&T is hearing you and making changes. They're giving every single customer, new and existing, the same deal. Check out smartphone pricing that's fair for everyone at att.com slash best deals. Restrictions apply. Welcome back into My Guys in the Desert. I'm Danielle Avari here at the VEASAN studio inside the South Point Sportsbook with Matt Humans and Amal Shaw. The NFL schedules are coming out tomorrow. They'll be released at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So lots of handicapping in the future for, I'm sure, Mr. Humans. Last look at these NFL futures before the schedule release. What have you already bet in terms of NFL futures? Not much. I don't like to bet a lot of futures, you know, in situations where you're not getting long odds, and mm-hmm. you have to wait seven or eight months to cash a ticket. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. I like, you know, college basketball futures might be a different story. If you grab a team at 200 to 1 that you really like, you know, it's worth it. Is it worth making a bet in the NFL at 5 to 1 that you can't cash for eight months? I don't know about that. I'm not crazy about that stuff. I did make one bet mm-hmm. based on the Aaron Rodgers drama. Oh, yeah. I've talked about it the past couple of days. The Vikings plus 350 to win the NFC North. And that's up here at the uh, South Point right now. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going back to Green Bay. And the Packers have a first-place schedule. If you look at it, it's going to be difficult to navigate that schedule, even with Rodgers. And uh, if he's gone... They're probably the Packers are probably going to be a six win team and the Vikings become the favorites in that division. So it wasn't a big bet for me. It's a decent sized bet on the Vikings plus three fifty. That's the only NFL futures wager I have at this point. But when we see the schedule tomorrow and uh, the you know more win totals come out and you can see the sequence of the schedule. I'll probably right. start to look at some NFL win total plays. Tomorrow. I don't think you're the only person who made that Vikings bet either, but that's a really good number because even on DraftKings right now, the Vikings to win the NFC North are plus two fifty. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's come down quite a bit. And yeah. obviously it lends itself to the fact that many people think he will not be back in Green Bay, as Matt just said. The one for me that still stands out is the Buffalo Bills to win the AFC East. It's a minus price, but I think when you look at that division, New England, a lot of question marks. The Jets, they're going to play better. Mm-hmm. I think they're probably, at best, an eight-win team if everything breaks their way, eight and nine. I've been saying a lot for a team that won two games last season. It that's, is, but they yeah. won a lot of games. And unless Greg Williams is sitting there blowing leads, you know, I, I think they've got a great chance to be yeah. better. And then the other thing, the Miami Dolphins, you alluded to it with the Green Bay schedule. Remember, they had one of the worst schedules in the NFL last year, Danielle. It's going to turn around now based on what they did this past season. And until Tua shows me that he can throw the ball six yards down the field, I'm not ready to Which back to my... Which is a big ask. It's it a big really ask, is. admittedly. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Danielle with the shot at Tua. Wow. Oh, is she wrong, though? I mean, think about no, this. Every right. place there is an out to the uh, tight end. As long as he drops the QB waggle pa- uh, part of the uh, pocket seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. So it looks like he threw the ball eight yards. I like the Dolphins as a team, but I do have a lot of questions about Tua, too. So. Uh, I would have questions, too, if yeah. I had my hips dislocated from my body. What an injury to have to overcome. At least he's young, though. Hopefully we'll see more from him. <laughs> this season what do you think about this movement on the Broncos to win the AFC West obviously on the news of what's going on with Aaron Rodgers the Chiefs obviously the favorite minus 305 on DraftKings here the Broncos though five to one they're in second here the Chargers are six to one the Raiders are 16 to one you're not gonna back Derek Carr 16 to one no no <laughs> leave that we'll leave that to Brent Musburger I think he's gonna be on with us Thursday to talk about the schedule hey I, you look at the Raiders win total at some spots at seven and a half mm-hmm. with 17 games and the extra home game. And you think, well, you know, they got a decent shot to get over that win total. Win the division, I don't I think that's out of the question. I'm not even going to debate that. <laughs> even though I, I'm really not sure we should laugh about it because the Raiders were this close to sweeping the Chiefs last season. They really were. Uh-huh. One play away from sweeping the Kansas City Chiefs, so it's not like uh, they're a joke. Um Chiefs still got to be the odds-on favorites in the division. Even if Aaron Rodgers goes to the Broncos, you still make the Chiefs a minus price to win the division. Completely agree with you. I still have some question marks, guys, about Denver's defense. Von Miller's gotten older. Vic Fangio, now that Anthony Lynn is no longer in the league, is officially the worst game manager in the NFL. (laughs) He doesn't have a clue at times what he's doing. But I'll tell you who puts a lot of pressure on him in terms of bad game management. Kyle Shanahan. 
Holy cow. I mean, you, you know what? It's amazing. You can, you can call plays, but you can't manage the game. Well, you know, I agree with that, too. And I've said that he gets a lot of praise from a lot of people. And I've praised him, too, for his play calling and the way he designs an offense. But he's not the best game manager. You're correct. There, but there are a lot of coaches in the NFL who struggle in that area. Yeah, but it's amazing to me. Yeah. All these teams spend all this money on salary cap. And they don't have, the uh, you know, just the insight in terms of, hey, we need somebody to tell you in a certain situation, you just have to run the ball. I'm not talking about calling plays, but there are certain times you have to run it, certain times maybe it's prudent to just take a knee or what have you. Danielle, Amal goes off in this rant about 50 times a year at least, so just be prepared. Is Are you the, rounding down nowadays? Yeah. Are you rounding down? Over on that. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. By the way, Danielle, that's officially off the board. That is um, that is the best over on the board. I think we can all agree. Uh, but all those coaches can suffer through one extra game this season, as Matt mentioned. We have a lot more to talk, break down right here on My Guys in the Desert. This is the OddsTrader.com studio at the South Point Casino. Make sure you check out OddsTrader.com and download the free OddsTrader app right now so you can start winning with the up to the second info you need. Back now with my guys in the desert, Danielle Alvari here with Matt Humans and Amal Shaw. And joining us shortly, Johnny Avello, DraftKings Sportsbook Director. All right, Amal Shaw, how many times a year do you go on that uh, rant about NFL coaches and game management mistakes? At least 100? Yeah, it's got to be probably north of that. Okay, uh, north of that. North I, of that. Listen, we all love football, but there's just certain things that are common sense. For some reason, it seems to elude people that are on the sideline that are paid between seven and fifteen million dollars a year. How about Vic Fangio? And no, listen, that would, that would be like picking on the disabled. Come on, Vic's a moron. We know that. Let's move on to real coaches. I mean, Kyle Shanahan. Everyone tells me how great of a coach mm-hmm. he is, except he doesn't know when to run the ball, when to kill the clock, what to do. I said there's a lot of coaches like that. Anthony Lynn was probably the worst in the NFL. Oh, he's historically bad. I still go back to the game against Tampa. They got a 17-point lead. It's raining. You're at your own 10-yard line. Tampa's got one timeout remaining. And this genius Mensa membership in the mail for him decides to run the ball instead of dropping to take three knees, get out of there, take a 17-point lead in the locker room. No, don't worry about it, Tampa. We're going to allow you right back in the game. I'm all Shaw on a rant about NFL coaches. All right, John Avello joins us now, DraftKings Sportsbook Director. Uh, follow on Twitter at DK Sportsbook. And, uh, John, while we're talking NFL, let's talk about the DraftKings Pro Football Millionaire Survivor Contest. I saw this announced recently. Can you give us the details on uh, signing up and what the payoffs are like this season at DraftKings? Yeah, Matt, uh, we've actually launched uh, two contests. We've launched the uh, the Pro Pick'em, and we've launched the Survivor Contest. Okay. Uh, the you know, we we like to get we like to get things up early. To, uh, you know, this uh, th- during the year we try to get up before some of the competition goes up. Um, the Survivor Contest is a uh, I, I don't know what the entry fee. I think it's a a hundred dollar entry fee, and um, you know, whoever of course we all know how the Survivor pools work. You go as long as you can go, and last year we went quite a few weeks. I think we went ten weeks or so. So. Um, uh, there'll be a lot of money in there. The other one, the Pro Pick'em Contest, that's a $1,500 entry. Uh, you know, we're paying a million to the to the winner. Um, so we got two great contests that have kicked off early. All right, you can see all the details there at DK Sportsbook on Twitter if uh, you want to check it out. Also up on the website. Never too soon to talk about NFL handicapping contests. People love it. We've... Uh, we're talking about it with Derek Stevens at Circus Sports. Tony Miller just opened his college NFL combination contest at the Golden Nugget. And uh, pretty soon we'll be talking about the Westgate Super Contest as well. Yeah, I love this. And I love what uh, Johnny was talking about in reference to, you know, you look at the cost. It's going to be very affordable and reasonable for a lot of people to get sure. involved in it. Matt should make for a very fun and exciting year. And hopefully I won't go against myself and my uh, principle of not taking a road team. Johnny, I got beat with the uh, Steelers in uh, week 15 uh, against the Bengals. And so hopefully I won't make that mistake in the uh, uh, one of these survivor contests in the future. I don't know if it, that's a mistake. It's just uh, unfortunate. <laughs> well, I, I no, I said one of my rules is never take a team on the road, and I had I still had the Ravens, and and I was still mad that I didn't take it. But that's another story. Think about all the people who played the Colts on the road in Week One. Yeah, but again, it goes to my. Point. It was a loss. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they just lost on the yeah, road in Week One. Absolutely, uh, I agree. Actually, I tend to agree with your theory. 
All right, Johnny, the uh, post-position draw is out for the Preakness. Um, Medina Spirit drew the three. Looks like the 9-5 to five favorite on the morning line. What's your reaction to the uh, post-position draw? Well, there's only 10 horses, so there really isn't a bad post here. Uh, that's fine for Medina Spirit. Uh, there's some others that are certainly going to go uh, try to get the lead and not let Medina Spirit get the lead. Uh, the, the Baffert has two horses in the race, Concert Tour. I know he doesn't want to kill each horse because uh, Concert Tour also likes to go out. So I think what will happen is Medina Spirit will go out, Concert Tour will settle somewhere second, third position. But there's others there who are not trained by Baffert that are going to try to upset this race. Uh, Midnight Bourbon can go out. And so there, there's others that will not let Medina Spirit have that dream trip that uh, he had in the Derby. Um, I don't like Medina Spirit here. I don't think Medina Spirit wins this race. I'm not saying that he won't be in the mix. I just don't think uh, this is good. It's going to be the same type of race it was in the Derby. I thought you were going to say because Bob Baffert said he hated to see his horse go through this controversy and he felt bad for the horse. Maybe the horse was depressed this week. Hey, the horse knows nothing, Matt. Uh, <laughs> you know, the horse will run its race. The horse didn't know that it had some kind of med different medication it shouldn't have had. It didn't know any of that. So can't take anything out on the horse. Bob said he felt bad for the horse. He hated to see the horse go through it, Amal. It was uh, emotionally disturbing for the horse to go through <laughs> the controversy. Well, since I'm such a huge horse racing guy, I would just say yes to move on. Uh, concert tour, 5-2 to two in the 10 spot, and Midnight Bourbon at 5-1. to one. Johnny, have you given this uh, race much thought, how you might play it? You don't A like little it? bit, Matt. Okay. Um, I'm still digging in. Uh, you, the horse that I... Think that I'm leaning towards a little. I'm going to dive into this more as the a horse that's ten to one crowded trade. Um, it's a so you know it's it's a horse trained by one of your top trainers, ridden by one of your top jocks. Uh, has has ran a couple of really good races as of late. Doesn't have many as these are only three year olds. But uh, I'm I'm going to certainly be looking for an upset. I think Concert Tour is the horse to beat. Uh, that's the horse that was tough to beat. Throughout the entire uh, three-year-old campaign, uh, didn't win, didn't run well in its last race, but I think that horse with Mike Smith will be ready for a big one. So that's the horse you have to beat. All right, you're a horse guy. What's uh, what's your take on this entire uh, issue with Bob Baffert and uh, the positive drug test after the Derby? How do you read the whole situation? Well, he he said this morning that it was in some cream that they used on the horse, which is probably true. But unfortunately, when you're the trainer and you tell the vets to do something, you better know what's in that cream. So I think it's about taking full responsibility. Um, I believe that when it's all said and done, I don't care what his, what his lawyer team is. I don't care if he's got the OJ team. I think this horse will be disqualified from the Derby, and <laughs> it, it will go to the second-place finisher. You definitely want the OJ team on your side. I'm all if you go to court. I, I don't disagree with you there. Uh, since we have Johnny on, I, I gotta, I'm going to switch away a little bit from horse racing. Mm -hmm. One of the premier guys in terms of making handicapping and lines for college football. Johnny, obviously everybody's probably got Alabama installed as a favorite. I don't know how much you've had an opportunity to break down, but I'll tell you a team that I like in the SEC this year is the Georgia Bulldogs. I think they've got an opportunity with JT Daniels back under center. Uh, Alabama's got to replace a lot of their players, eight guys going in the first two rounds. Uh, anybody else that maybe stands out to you from a team perspective that maybe either the public are looking at or maybe they're overlooking? Uh, you know, Matt, um, you know, Amal, you said uh, Georgia, and Georgia's actually in the mix every year. And it's strange because when you look at our futures, you look at Alabama, Clemson, Ohio State, Georgia, uh, Oklahoma, LSU. I mean, what has changed in the last five or six years? Absolutely nothing. Uh, one team that I always kind of look at, they just don't seem to ever put it together, uh, is, a, is a Texas team. I mean, they're, you're getting over, you can probably get 40 to one if you shop around. Um, Miami's another team, possibly. But these teams don't win it, but you know, these teams are capable of making it to that that final uh, four. And that's, that's what you have to look for, is somebody that can make it to the final four. When you get there, it's a tough, it's, you know, it's a tough to win it. You go, you're going to have two of those, at least two of those six I just mentioned.
You know, Matt, I think he makes a good point. I think Texas is definitely going to be better, but I think it's going to take a little bit of time. My one issue with Texas, guys, is everybody's talking about Sark coming in there, and that's great. But you know what? He had a plethora of talent down in Tuscaloosa, and Nick Saban was still running the show there. When you look at what Sark has done overall, 46-35 and 35 record, 2-2 two and two, two bowl record, it's not like Pete Carroll's coming down to the 40 acres. Mm-hmm. Well, you got to have the quarterback, too, to pull the trigger, and that's going to be a big part of it. If uh, Sarkissian can find the right quarterback, I think Texas could get things turned around pretty quickly. He's going he's gonna to bring talent into Austin. You know, Matt, There's I lived no in doubt about I, I lived in And Dallas. I agree with what you said about him previously as a head coach. He's going to have to be a different guy this time. Well, I've been hearing this about Texas for two decades. I mean, you know, outside of the Vince Young year, this is a program. They've got one national title in the last 50 years, and I talk about this with Michigan all the time. They've got a half a national title since 1948. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of these perennial programs, at some point in time, they've got to actually deliver on what's expected. I think Texas is closer than uh, Michigan. That would be my uh... – my bet. I think Texas is closer to getting there than Jim Well, there's Harbaugh. no question. You know, we don't see Texas folding out of games in the Red River against Oklahoma. Uh, all right, let's talk golf. Johnny, props to you. You had Rory McIlroy last week at Quail Hollow. What would you get, 20-1 to 1 on Rory? Yeah, I did. Uh, I had three guys. He was one of them. So, and he was – and he held on. I mean, you know, Rory plays some good stretches of golf, Matt, but, you know, he – he uh, loses his concentration, especially in the last hole the, he lost it. I mean, he, yeah. he didn't even use the driver. He used, a, a, you know, like a three-wood or a five-wood, and he still almost hit it in the water. <laughs> I know. He almost blew it. Uh, I, don't like, uh, I don't like to bet Rory too often. That's the first time he's won in uh, over 550 days. But good call by you. He was a horse for the course at Quail Hollow. What was the handle like on that tournament last week? Did you have to pay out a lot on Rory? Uh, no, we made money on the tournament. We yeah. did pay out on Rory, uh, and the handle was very good, as it is in golf each and every week. Um, you know, you you put all the is the more of the top guys that play. Obviously, the the handle seems to get bigger. Even though I believe that when it when the top guys aren't in there, you actually can find some value in there. You'll you'll find some guys that can actually win a tournament. Uh, and and get decent prices on it. The Byron Nelson is this week in uh, Texas, north of uh, Dallas, and uh, the top guys in this tournament: John Rahm, Bryson DeChambeau, Jordan Spieth. No DJ, no Rory in the tournament this week. Who do you like in uh, Texas, Johnny? You know, Matt, I'm I'm not really playing uh, substantial this week. I might dabble around. Uh, one guy that I looked at that might be some value here and you know i don't know what his game's like right now is brooks kepka uh-huh. you, know, you can get you can get brooks kepka probably around 25 to 1 or so and uh he's played well here before i think last not last year the previous year he played well here don't know what his game that's that's strictly on the price uh you know, but I, I don't know where Brooks Kepka's game is right now. Yeah, it's hard to say where he is with uh, with the knee. He hobbled around at Augusta and uh, did not play very well. But Brooks Kepka is one of those guys, when he does get the game back, you want to be on him at about 25, 30 to 1 odds if you can grab him in that range. And that's where he is this week. Also at DraftKings, you can bet top 5, top 10, top 20. Plenty of ways to uh, play it. And I'll talk about my best bets uh, for that tournament in the next segment. Uh, how about the NBA tonight? LeBron's not back, but the Lakers are small home favorites tonight over the Knicks. Is that the game of the night for you at DraftKings in the NBA? Uh, that's going to be one of them. Uh, certainly those night games seem to write a lot of money. I think that Phoenix Suns Warrior game is also going to be a pretty good write tonight. Mm-hmm. A lot of these teams need to win, Matt. You know, Lakers being one of them, the you know, they, uh, they need to continue to win a couple of games here. That game has dropped. We opened that game five and a half. We're down to three. So we have seen some Nick money. Now, it's not that we haven't seen Laker money. We have. It's But we, we are heavy on the Knicks tonight. All yeah. right. Well, how about the other game, Suns and the Warriors with the Suns laying four and a half at Golden State, Johnny? Yeah, Golden State. Uh, we opened up the Suns. The road favorite at five. We're down to four and a half. And that's what we're seeing is Golden State money tonight. Johnny, uh, obviously you guys have a big presence on the East Coast. Uh, have you guys been inundated with Brooklyn Nets, Philadelphia 76ers money just based on proximity and obviously both of those teams having very successful seasons? Yes and yes. <laughs> you know, we've taken so much money on the Nets because the Nets were, uh, you know, flirting around with who they were going to get at one point. We had them up, you know, around 12 and then 
Uh, you know, there was rumors they were going to get players. They ended up getting players. And so now we're at two to one. We, they've been bet all year with us. The Lakers have actually been bet all year with us, even though it hasn't been quite as successful as successful of a year as they'd like to have, uh, at least, uh, you know, heading into the playoffs. 76ers is another team that we have a bunch of money on. So you're right. The bias is there. All right. Baseball tonight. The Dodgers back in action, five and 15 in their past 20 games. Big favorites tonight with Walker Bueller on the mound against the Seattle Mariners in L.A. Uh, Johnny, what's wrong with the Dodgers? You and I talked about this for a story I wrote for the New York Post. And the big picture, I'm sure the Dodgers are going to get back on track at some point. The question is when. I think they will get back on track, and uh, this could be the start of it tonight. They're only 18 and 17 after starting a season like 12 and three. Um, you know, you don't want to you don't want to be playing your best baseball at the beginning of the season. Uh, you want to be playing your best baseball at the end of the season. Uh, you know, I wouldn't bet the Dodgers at a short price either, even before the season started, because uh, the Dodgers have been good enough to win the World Series the last six years and ended up with one win. So. Uh, for some reason, they just, they, their bullpen has been shaky. Uh, so I don't, you know, I, I don't look at them as a team that's uh, going to win this thing. For sure, they could win it, but I, my money wouldn't be on them. I'd be looking elsewhere this year. All right. How about uh, movement on the baseball board? Any teams you're seeing draw action today? Uh, Cleveland drew a ton of money. Bieber. Uh, with yeah. Bieber on the mound tonight. That game went from 150 to 205. That's about the biggest move as you're going to see in baseball, 50 cents. So uh, Cleveland took the money against the Cubs tonight. That's one of the games that just started. Certainly understandable with uh, Bieber against the Cubs. Johnny Avello, DraftKings Sportsbook Director. Johnny, uh, thanks for the time. Appreciate it as always. You're welcome, guys. Have a good day. Thank you. Johnny hit the winner last week in the golf tournament. Rory at 20 to 1. He's one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to the sports betting world, no question about it. All right, stop kissing his butt. Yeah, that's what I'm known for, being a big <laughs> butt kisser of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a couple minutes, be in the Sports Betting Network. It's crazy how much we have to pay for outdated, impersonal health care, and even crazier that we all just accept it. It's time to face facts. Health care is backwards. Luckily, there's Forward, a new approach to primary care that's surprisingly personal and refreshingly straightforward. Forward never makes you feel like just another patient. Backed by top-rated doctors and the latest tech, Forward gives you access to personalized care whenever you need it. Using in-depth genetic analysis and real-time blood work, Forward's top-rated doctors provide you with in-depth insights to better understand your genetics, mental, and physical health. They then create custom, easy-to-understand plans to help guide you to achieving long-term health. With Forward, you get unlimited in-person visits with your doctor and access to care anytime via the Forward app, all for one flat monthly fee. It's time to stop accepting backwards health care and start moving your health forward. Visit GoForward.com today to learn more. That's GoForward.com. After all that planning, it's happening. Your DIY closet renovation is finally becoming a reality. Question is, where do you put your things while you work? CubeSmart has you covered with month-to-month -month leases and self-storage solutions that make it easier to get organized. Online or in person, getting self-storage is convenient and fast. And because DIY renovations can easily go over budget, it's great that CubeSmart is offering up to 25% off your monthly rent. Say goodbye to before and hello to after with CubeSmart self-storage. Visit CubeSmart.com for more details. Welcome back in. Don't wait.
28 days for your winnings. Cash out instantly with Bet Rivers' new feature, Rush Pay. Get your cash when you want it at Bet Rivers Sportsbook, the industry leader with exclusive bets, daily specials, odds boosts, and the most in play betting options out there. As always, get a $250 match bonus, the fastest payouts, and only one time playthrough at Bet Rivers, your hometown sportsbook. Offer valid in Colorado, Illinois, Indiana, Virginia, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Available at PlaySugarHouse.com in New Jersey. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem in Illinois, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. Colorado, 1-800-522-4700. Michigan, 1-800-270-7117. Virginia, 1-888-532-3500. Not valid in Iowa. This is My Guys in the Desert. Let's get back to Matt Humans and Amal Shah. All right, Amal Shah, the number two guy on the nuts. Uh, good to have you. you on the show today. Thanks, man. I told you it's the number three guy. <laughs> Who's number two? <laughs> it's Mike. Mike Palm. And then whoever else fills in and then me. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to your best bet in baseball here in a minute. I don't think you're a golf guy necessarily, right? No, last time I played golf was 2006. And so after I stopped playing golf, I stopped watching golf. Well, Wes Reynolds doesn't play golf and he handicaps it every day of the week. Wes also watches pro wrestling. Do you watch pro wrestling? Why don't you take a wild guess on that one? (laughs) (laughs) All right, this week's AT&T, Byron Nelson at the uh, TPC Craig Ranch north of Dallas. Uh, This is a new course to the PGA Tour rotation. You worked in Dallas for a while. Covered covered the Nelson many times at the Four Seasons over in Irving. Right. That was not at this course, the TPC Craig Ranch. Obviously, it's a, a different course. So when you're handicapping it, you don't have course history to go by here. It's in um, McKinney, Texas. Okay, so north right. of north of Dallas, yep. I went with some Texans this week, guys who I know who are familiar with this course. Uh, one is Scotty Shuffler. He's searching for his first PGA Tour win, 24-year-old from Dallas. He tied for fourth in last year's PGA. He does have some experience on this course. Uh, he grew up in this region, obviously, and uh, played this course as a kid. Uh, so, and Scotty Scheffler, I think, similar to Jordan Spieth, about a month and a half ago when he won in San Antonio, uh, really grinding for that first win on the tour. Like Spieth was grinding to end that losing streak, that long drought he had. Uh, so I'm playing Scheffler at 22 to one. Uh, also going to play Will Zalatoris, a guy who grew up in Plano, Texas. And uh, Zalatoris kind of under the radar this week because he. He missed the cut last week. A lot of people jumped off the bandwagon. But if you think of the week after the Masters, he was the hot guy in the golf world uh, because of his performance at Augusta. Zalatoris knows this course. Going to play him at 23-1. to uh, Got Ryan Palmer, 14 straight made cuts on the tour. That's the second longest streak. He's got eight top 20s in that stretch. Ryan Palmer is another Texan. And uh, also Mark Leishman, who's got a pretty good history uh, with tournaments in Texas. And he's in good current form as well, tied for fifth at the Masters, and uh, was part of the uh, team that won the event in New Orleans. He's a good player in the wind, and a lot of times in Texas you need guys who can play well in the wind, and Mark Leishman is one of those guys. So Scheffler, Zalatoris, Leishman, and Palmer, and I played Scheffler in a matchup over Matt Fitzpatrick this week. Uh, So the best bets for the Byron Nelson in Texas. Uh, Amal, let's get to your baseball play. We've got one in progress. You've still got a chance in here with the over in the Rangers-Giants game. It's 4-2 to two in the bottom of the eighth, and um, you played that over eight, so you've still got a shot there. You've also got a play tonight you gave out on the nuts today on the Tigers-Royals game. Yeah, Tigers-Royals under 7.5 in this one. Singer versus uh, Boyd in this matchup. Both these guys have pitched particularly well. Matt, it wasn't just about the pitchers going. It's about the futility of these two offenses. Mm -hmm. Royals just 21 runs in their last eight games. The Tigers just 62 runs in their last 21 games. Just four wins and 17 losses in that stretch. Really continuing to struggle. When you look at it, during the wins, they performed well offensively. But they have been absolutely anemic in terms of what they've been doing on offense when they haven't won the game. So I think it could be a bit of a struggle here. These two guys matched up on April 24th. We saw the Royals win that game. I think it was by a score of 2-1. to one. So I think we could see, or at least I'm hoping for a similar score line. You alluded to that Giants game right now at AT&T. Uh, 4-2 uh, G-men leading right now. But, you know, if I need this game to go over, Wilmer Flores would have, uh, if I needed it under, Wilmer Flores would have hit a two-run homer. But he does what he always does, grounds <laughs> out. Uh, back to that Royals-Tigers game for a second. The Royals have really been in a tailspin, them all. And uh, Matthew Boyd 
227 ERA, but he's two and three because he's pitching for one of the worst teams in baseball, the Tigers, ten and twenty-four. Yeah, Matthew Boyd, the worst the, team in baseball, one of the few bright spots for the Tigers. Yeah. And it's unfortunate when you look at this as a program. You mentioned the Dodgers, eighteen and seventeen. Remember the eighty-four Tigers got off to that thirty-five and five start. I mean, this is a team that might be lucky to win thirty-five games the way they're going. I think you're going to have to look at fading them unless Boyd's on the mound. All right, a report on NFL Network yesterday suggested one team believes it's seriously in a running to land Aaron Rodgers in a trade. We're going to tell you which team that is next. I'm Danielle Alvari. Did you know vcin.com has the latest lines and odds for every game on the board tonight? Track the line movements with live charts, get estimated scores for every matchup, and all the betting information you need to stay on top of the action. You can also use our parlay calculator to figure out payouts and get all our betting 101 info, including definitions of the betting terms we use here on the Sports Betting Network. Start your day's sports betting research for free at vcin.com. Now back to my guys in the desert with Matt Humans and Amal Shah. All right, Amal. Uh, the NFL schedule release is tomorrow, 5 o'clock Pacific, and uh, Good Morning America is going to spoil it for some people. Nearly 12 hours before the official NFL schedule release, GMA will be allowed to announce the week one Monday night football matchup, and that's going to be tomorrow morning. Uh, it's not going to be a Monday night doubleheader this year, apparently, oh, really? which is a little bit disappointing. Just going to be one game on Monday night. Would it be... What do you think the Monday night game is? Uh, I've got it narrowed down to about 32 teams. I don't. You and I agree. We don't think it's going to be the Cowboys. A lot of times, the Week One game is Giants Cowboys on Sunday night, right? The Sunday night football game. What do you think the Monday night game is going to be? Well, I'm going to eliminate Jacksonville, so I've got it down to 31. Uh, I'm going to take Dallas out of the equation because they'll, they'll be a prime time late Sunday. Mm-hmm. Dak Prescott back in the mix. Uh, Green Bay is not going to be on the schedule because we don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to be there. Right. I think I've got a pretty good shot with these 29 teams. Let's go with Buffalo and the Miami Dolphins. I know it's not going to be that, but I just wanted to give some people in uh, Western New York some love since nobody else in the league does. How about Buccaneers at Patriots? Whew. That would be a good one, right? Cam Newton going to throw for 17 yards? Bucks patriots Or do the Bucks have to play on Thursday night? They, they got to play Thursday, yeah. Super Bowl champs. That would be that would be, I think, the most attractive Week One game. I'm not sure what the Monday night game is going to be. I don't know, but I can tell you this: I'm not tuning into GMA to find out. I don't think it's going to be the Broncos in one of those spots until, and like you said, the Packers and Broncos aren't going to be in those uh, high-profile primetime spots until we know what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers, and the schedule is going to be out before that, obviously. So uh, there is one team. And it's the Broncos that believes uh, they have a serious shot to land Aaron Rodgers in a trade. James Palmer had this report yesterday on the NFL Network. Inside the building, who told me that it is a real possibility Aaron Rodgers could end up with the Denver Broncos. Those same people have told me that, remember, deals of this size with players of this nature, MVPs, are difficult to get done, and you don't know if they're going to get done until you get to the finish line. And at the same time, you need the Packers to make him available. But let's just talk in speculation in a sense about how the Broncos are a legitimate landing spot. Remember how aggressive George Payton has been at the quarterback spot and how he's talked about how aggressive he's going to be about improving the quarterback spot. Going after Matthew Stafford, not only coming up short there, but not really going into the free agent market in terms of Andy Dalton or Ryan Fitzpatrick. The Teddy Bridgewater deal was something that's been in the works for a while. And when they heard the news about Aaron Rodgers and his 
you know, uncomfortable situation with the Green Bay Packers, they started kind of thinking about what a package would be if they were going to try to put something together for Aaron Rodgers. And obviously, the Packers on draft day weren't picking up the phone and talking about those discussions. But also comes into play their cap situation. Very few teams have the cap ability to land Aaron Rodgers. The Broncos do. They have the second most cap space in the NFL. And then a lot of teams would have to unload an expensive quarterback to make room for Aaron Rodgers. The Broncos don't have that. Teddy Bridgewater, because of the way George Payton played it, they only have him for about 3 to $4 million. And Drew Locke's below that. So they don't have these constraints that a lot of other teams have in landing Aaron Rodgers. All right, if you look at the, uh, the math here on the NFL schedules, uh, based on opponents combined 2020 win percentage, which is not a great way to do it, but uh, it's one way to measure schedule strength. The Packers are going to have the fourth most difficult schedule in the NFL. If they don't have Aaron Rodgers, it goes to the number one most difficult schedule. Uh, how likely do you think it is the Denver Broncos can land Rodgers in some sort of trade? And it's not going to happen in the next few weeks. It's going to happen in June or July if it happens. Yeah, I don't think it'll happen because I think you're going to have to trade away too many future first-round picks. I mean, if you're Green Bay, you're giving away a quarterback. Okay, you want to make the argument and he's not in the prime of his career anymore. That's fine. But he's still got probably three, four, five good years left. I mean, he's playing at an elite level. He's still one of the top three quarterbacks in the NFL. He would change Denver's fortunes overnight. Green Bay would go from a 13-win team to probably a six-win team if things break properly, seven wins. Mm -hmm. How good is Jordan Love? I had question marks about him getting drafted out of Utah State to begin with. Is he ready to step in and lead this team? And what is the mentality? uh, What happens in terms of that locker room? How does everyone approach it? You know, To me, I think Matt LaFleur then becomes alienated as the head coach as well because it's part of his decision-making in that NFC Championship game against against Tampa Bay twice that killed them. Once was at the end of the first half when they had a second and 17. They should have just basically run the ball, killed the clock, and got them out of there. They allowed Tampa to get seven points. And then the decision to not go for the touchdown down eight with Rodgers and company with fourth and goal at the nine-yard line I mean, it's not like we're talking about having uh, Andy Dalton under center there. This is a guy that's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the best in terms of not turning the football over. So to me, when you're Green Bay, Matt, I I don't know how you get out of this. I think you hope to get a King's ransom in return. Sure. But if you do this, you're going full rebuild mode. Your window is right now, just like the Saints and Tampa. I have a choice. Yeah. If Aaron Rodgers is not going to play for you, if he says he's going to retire, I think the smart thing you have to do is make a deal, get as much as you can in return, get a couple of first-round picks, maybe a veteran quarterback. Let's say you make a deal with the Broncos. Do you want Teddy Bridgewater back? Uh, A couple of first-round picks in the second round or whatever you can get. You have to get as much as possible for Aaron Rodgers. You you don't want to have so much pride that you hurt the franchise for the long run and you don't get a lot for Rodgers in a uh, trade with, say, the Broncos. I agree with you. And the other thing is if I'm Rodgers, I say I'm, I'm going to retire right. because that way the team that's going to acquire you doesn't have to give up as much. If Rodgers is genuinely threatening to sit out, at least put that out there. It doesn't hurt you if you choose to return. Green Bay will accept you with open arms. So for me, if I'm uh, Aaron Rodgers, say, hey, listen, you know what, guys? I've had enough. I'm retiring. Go ahead and try, trade me for a bag of practice balls. You know, see what another team's willing to offer up. And I think maybe you look at the Stafford deal, potential two first-round picks or something similar to that. Um, I think if Aaron Rodgers goes somewhere, it just changes in the fortunes of that division, that conference, wherever he is. There's a lot of win totals on the board, division no odds. Uh, like I said, I played the Vikings plus 350 to win the NFC North. I don't think Rodgers is going back to Green Bay. This guy, talking about this was Mitch Moss and Paul Howard on Follow the Money this morning. He appears to be dug in. This is the guy who shut out his family, his parents. If he's angry at the Packers, he's probably not going to let them back in, right? Uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. I can't, I can't <laughs> comment on the family situation. I don't know what it entails. But to me, when you look at what he's been able to do for this team, 26-6 and six during the regular season last couple of years, and yeah, people can say he's failed in the postseason at times. But it's not like he's been given, Matt, in the last 10 years, they've drafted one offensive player, and that was a backup quarterback for him. In the last 20 years, they've drafted one wide receiver, Javon Walker, in 2002. I don't think he's going back to Green Bay. No, I don't either. Pretty confident he's not. And it would be in the Green Bay Packers' best interest to make a deal sometime in June or later in the summer to deal him, probably to the Broncos. I think that's where he's headed. Quick break, we come back. Uh, One more note on the Aaron Rodgers situation, and we'll take a look at the top games tonight.
You wanted to see me, Miss Swinton? Have you been hearing about the new government modernization efforts? AI, RPAs, data science. Things are changing at this agency, and people will need new skills. Oh. I'd like you to get some training. Huh. Look at this management concepts catalog. Wow, over 275 courses. That's right, in local classrooms or instructor-led online classes. We still have budget in this fiscal year, so sign up online. Advance your career with courses from Management Concepts. Get a catalog at managementconcepts.com or call 833-578-8466. Change the way you think about your home with HomeSense, the newest member of the home goods family. They've got everything for your home inside and out. HomeSense lets you reimagine every room with fresh discoveries. Furniture? You bet. Rugs? Lots of them. Table lamps, floor lamps, chandeliers? Yes, yes, and yes. Plus, there's wall art, oversized mirrors, and enough outdoor furniture and decor to make your backyard the envy of the neighborhood. Grab the melamine dishes you've been looking for, or that six-piece outdoor set. With same-day delivery, you can have it today. HomeSense is a new shopping adventure every time you visit. New finds arrive all the time, so every day you'll find incredible savings on different must-have decor. Pro tip, if you see something you love, don't wait, because at HomeSense, finds go fast. Get the brands you love at prices that make sense, so you can make the most of your home for less. Take a virtual tour and find a store near you at HomeSense.com. OddsTrader.com studio at the South Point Casino. Make sure you check out OddsTrader.com and download the free OddsTrader app right now so you can start winning with the up to the second info you need. Now let's get back to my guys in the desert with Matt Humans and Amal Shaw. All right, one more note on the uh, NFL schedule. A couple more. It's been reported the Sunday night game is not going to be Giants-Cowboys. And it seems like that's a game every year. It's going to be Bears at Rams. How do you feel about that matchup on a Sunday night? I can't wait. The Rams are my pick to win the NFC. Matthew Stafford, Justin Fields should be terrific. Daniel was amused yesterday because I uh, talked about Tim Tebow's got more career playoff victories as a quarterback than Matthew Stafford. You're correct on that. That game against the Pittsburgh Steelers (laughs) where they threw the ball to Demarius Thomas on the first play of the overtime. Uh, first time they threw the ball in that game on th- uh, on a first down situation all game and they get a touchdown. But in Matthew Stafford's defense, who has been the running back there in Detroit? Who's been the head coach that you point to and say, hey, this person, is a pr- they could take them over the top? Uh, let's move on. <laughs> I know you're going to go off on a rant here on the Lions. We don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, during the NFL draft, Michelle did this graphics, one of my favorite I've seen of Eason. During the NFL draft, the league ran a commercial for the May 12th scheduled release. The spot hyped Rodgers versus Mahomes as one of the games to be played in the first ever 17-game season. With the scheduled release a day away, there's a new version of the commercial. Rodgers versus Mahomes is gone. That's from Pro Football Talk, and there's our graphic. Mr. Rodgers' new neighborhood. Is it going to be Denver instead of Green Bay? And that does throw a wrinkle into what we talked about. Season win totals, division odds. And also how the NFL wants to lay out the primetime games in the schedule. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'll tell you, it's going to really change the landscape potentially of the entire NFC. If he were to go to the AFC and mm. what happens in the AFC as well, I don't think Kansas City becomes a slam dunk team. I still think they're the prohibitive favorite. Uh, but lots of question marks. And, and I'll tell you the other thing, uh, Matt, looking big picture for Green Bay. I think this hurts them in acquiring free agents. When you have a player of this caliber and you have not provided him the necessary tools at times Mm -hmm. to become successful and you lose a player of this caliber, that's really bad. You know what's what's interesting, too? We were talking about this last week with the Packers. The season win total opened at DraftKings 10.5 at Caesars William Hill 11. If it's Jordan Love, a quarterback, instead of Aaron Rodgers, will you make the win total 6.5? I think that's about right. Seven. Seven's maybe. optimistic. Look at the Packers' schedule outside the division. Home games, Rams, Seahawks, Browns, Steelers, Washington. This is a first-place schedule. Uh, road oh games, God. Cardinals, 49ers, Ravens, Bengals, Saints, and Chiefs. Uh, even with Aaron Rodgers, it's going to be a difficult schedule to uh, navigate. <clears throat> Without him, good luck trying to win eight games. So I, I think the highest you would make that one total seven, and you're probably going to shade it a little bit lower. How about if it's Teddy Bridgewater 
uh, let's say you make a deal with Broncos and Teddy B comes back and he's a quarterback and he can mentor uh, Jordan Love for another season. Would you give the Packers much of a chance of being better with Teddy B instead yeah, of uh, I'd say eight, eight and a half. Maybe. I think I like Teddy Bridgewater. Remember, he went five and zero in New Orleans. Got Devontae Adams there. He had success with Michael Thomas down in the Bayou. So for me, I think they'd be better in that sense. I think the division is still weak enough with the Bears, Minnesota, and Detroit being average teams at best. I think there's a potential if you're Green Bay, you could win six games right there with Bridgewater as opposed to Jordan Love. All right, Amal. Let's look at some of the top games tonight and. Uh... Unfortunately, we have a final in San Francisco. Your game did not go over. Giants beat the Rangers four, uh, four to two. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Were you looking for a comment? No. <laughs> okay. No, I was going to move on to the Yankees Rays game. Jordan Montgomery, the lefty, goes for the Yankees, who are two games over five hundred at the Trop, and uh, Yankees minus one thirty total of eight. We were talking about this with uh, Dave Koken early in the show. I I cannot lay this price with the Yankees on the road. It's dropped. It's minus 118 uh, here at the South Point, plus 108 on the Rays. For some reason, the Yankees, well, we know why. The Yankees have had a lot of problems with the Rays the past couple of years. Yeah, they really have. And uh, Tampa at home looks pretty good here. Remember Aaron Boone, uh, Phil Nevin, along with other guys, coaches for this Yankees team out with COVID protocol. Um, uh, you know, the Yankees are always going to be prohibitive favorites in a lot of matchups, just like the Dodgers. But I think Tampa deserves a little bit more respect. The one thing that bothers me with the Rays, though, Matt, when they score, if you look at it, they'll go play eight frames at home. It'll be like seven zeros, and it'll be like a three to a five spot, mm -hmm. and then they just hope to hang on for dear life. Uh, Angel's going to start Shohei Otani tonight. Uh, Otani has a problem with control. He walks too many guys, yeah. but um, he's got electric stuff. He's a dog tonight against Lance McCullers in Houston. Angels and Astros right now at the South Point. Astros minus 148, total of eight and a half. Yeah, I don't have much interest in this game, and you brought up a couple of good points. One with Otani, walking too many guys. I don't care how much, how well you pitch, even if you have stuff that's plus-plus. It doesn't make a difference. The one thing that kills pitchers in baseball are the free passes. The mm -hmm. players are too good offensively that if you put free guys on base, especially with the ability of people to go deep, I think it could be a problem here. This Angels team, I'd like to see them right now sitting, I think, at 16 and 18, if they can get a little bit going in the right direction. They could be potential players at the trade deadline because in that Southern California yeah. market, Artie Marino, deep pockets. Um, and I, I'm just tired of seeing the Mike Trout era. I mean, what, really, he's going to go down as probably the greatest baseball player of all time. But nobody outside of Orange County will have seen him play because the Angels can't get out of their own way. I said this last week to JVT, <laughs> who's an Angels fan. I'll throw it at you. What do you make the prop? Will the Angels win a playoff series during Mike Trout's career? Well, I'll say they have yeah. not won a playoff game in ten years with a guy. Yeah, I know it's 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 unbelievable. <laughs> um, I I don't know. I, I don't get it. To me, it's an attractive place to uh, lure free agents in. Right. Um, they just do a poor job of that. And you know, the other thing is, though, I think the front office is just poor. When you look at that Albert Pujols situation, mm -hmm. when the St. Louis Cardinals allow a player 330, remember when he was in St. Louis, his career average was about 330 or 320-something. You let him walk away, and you give this guy 10 for 240, that should have told you right then and there was a bad move by the Angels. Mm -hmm. Well, the Angels were desperate at the time. I know a lot of Angels fans who loved that, who loved that move at the time. I'm sure they love the move to release him, too. Yeah, I, I did not. So uh, you've got almost a decade with Mike Trout. You haven't won a playoff game. I would still make the Angels a favorite, not yeah. a big favorite, to win a playoff series at some point in his career. Well, the so, problem is first got to get into the postseason. I know, I know. And then, you know, sometimes you – This is an interesting question, though, you think It really it. is yeah. a great question. And it's tough because even if you make it in, do you win? Maybe you have a bad three-game stretch and you get bounced. But – I don't know, and I think Mike Trout is eventually going to get to a point in his career where he's like, hey, listen, I, I want to move on. How long can you well, take? He had that opportunity a couple of years ago. He could have left Anaheim. He could have signed with the Yankees, anybody, and he decided to take the big money and stay with the Angels. Well, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to blame, blame him on that one. I mean, you know, the amount of money they paid him. But some of the decisions in baseball long-term deals, I don't get. I said from day one, mm -hmm. and I still stand by this, the Bryce Harper deal. Terrible. One of the worst deals oh, ever. Sick. I mean, I, I don't even – you know, sometimes I wonder, do these GMs actually get a kickback on the deal? Because you can't really be this dumb. First of all, I think it was a bad deal on both sides. If, yeah, you're, if you're Bryce Harper, why do you want to tie yourself to Philadelphia for that many years where after you slump, the fans are going to hate you? Well, And you could have got similar money in other cities. The, the Dodgers offered Harper, I think, $140 million over three years, right? 
Yeah, but I, I think Scott Boris and, and Harper know he's not quite as good as what he uh, projected to be based on one season in Washington. And they're getting the 13 for 325. It's a bad deal for the Phillies, too. That's a horrible deal. <clears throat> but remember, they, they, they gave Ryan Howard an extension two years before they needed to. So many teams do this constantly. Uh, one of the worst contracts in baseball was Albert Pujols' deal, but it was not the worst. Josh Hamilton had a pretty bad deal with him. No, the Angels. worst deal ever was Darren Dreyford, <laughs> five years, $55 million, pretty, coming off of two Tommy Johns. That was a pretty bad deal as well. Uh, all right, Amal, a couple more games to talk about briefly. Do you think the Seattle Mariners are live dogs tonight against the Dodgers and Walker Bueller at Dodger Stadium? Dodgers right now minus 240, total of seven. They have lost five straight series 5-15 and 15 in their past 20 games. We've talked a lot the past couple days about what's wrong with the Dodgers. Do they bounce back tonight against Seattle? Or would you look at the plus $2 on the Seattle side? You know, I think you have to look at the M's here. You, you mentioned the Dodgers' struggles. They've lost five out of six, and in those five losses, they've only managed to score 11 runs. They did have that explosive night against the Angels on Saturday where they scored 14 runs. But until we see some consistency from this team, and Walker Bueller, you know, Dave Koken mentioned it. He's unbelievable the first time through the lineup, and then the second time is where he really gets into trouble. I think in the M's can be competitive, have an opportunity to kind of find a way to get this game. You know, the Dodgers, you talked about it with Bellinger being out. This team is just not the same team. And the other problem with the Dodgers that I have is they have paralysis by over-analysis. They are so deep into this analytics. Clayton Kershaw, five innings in, 71 pitches on Saturday, and he gets pulled. What are we saving him for, the Hall of Fame game? Did he have a 13 nothing lead at that point? Yeah, but to me, let, let him go out there and, and throw a few more innings. Let him just – he can go seven innings. He's only at 71 pitches. You're still below the average of which he wants 15 per also, inning. Also, Clayton Kershaw went only one inning in his previous start against the Cubs at Wrigley Field, and he got bombed and uh, pulled out of that game, I think, after 39 pitches. Uh, so, yeah, he could have gone a little bit deeper. But it was 13-0. Oh, I can see it. The Dodgers almost blew the lead, by the way. Right. The Dodgers minus 147 in that game and had to sweat it out. Uh, one more talk about Padres and Rockies, and it looks like Fernando Tatis and some other players are going to be out tonight because of a COVID protocol. So uh, that's definitely going to weaken the Padres lineup, and I have not seen a big move on the odds board for this game. Do we have that information confirmed about Tatis and uh, the Padres who are going to miss that game tonight? It looks like Padres minus 165 at Colorado. Yeah, I think this is just more of the fact that the Rockies have really struggled. Now, at home, they've been decent this year, 10-8. and eight. I mean, on the road, they really can't do anything. Um, I, I'm not interested in this game either way. Lamette going up against Senzatella in this game. Senzatella has really struggled. Lamette has not been much better. Both guys come in with a whip over one and a half. How T says out of that game tonight. All right, which NBA game? We have one more hit. Do you have the most interest in tonight? Suns at Warriors or Knicks at Lakers? Well, I would say next to the Lakers. Um, I think this could be a really intriguing matchup. Both good defensive teams. They'll have an opportunity here. But the game that I'm looking at from a betting perspective, Matt, is the Hornets at home catching five and a half or six. Have you played it? I did. I took uh, Charlotte plus five and a half. Okay. Lions going up at some place to see if it's high as six right now. All right. There you go. Lamar Shaw on the Hornets. You take six? I got five and a half. You're I'm going to sit tight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thanks to Dave Koken, Johnny Adello, and Amal Shaw, Daniel Alvari as well. Uh, up next is Rush Hour with Danny Burke on VCM Sports Betting Network. You wanted to see me, Miss Swinton? Have you been hearing about the new government modernization efforts? AI, RPAs, data science. Things are changing at this agency, and people will need new skills. Oh. I'd like you to get some training. Huh. Look at this management concepts catalog. Wow, over 275 courses. That's right, in local classrooms or instructor-led online classes. We still have budget in this fiscal year, so sign up online. Advance your career with courses from Management Concepts. Get a catalog at managementconcepts.com or call 833-578-8466. Hey, don't forget the Johnsons are coming over. I want to find a rosé Jill hasn't tried yet. Let's go exploring at Total Wine. Their prices are ridiculously low. Wondrous selection, helpful guides, always low prices. Total Wine and more. 